Okay guys, here's a quick walk around and start up of my 2022 X-Pro Vader 125 uh, converted to the Zhongchen 190cc. Uh, this engine got here on Friday, September the 9th, and I started about 6 p.m. I stayed up till about 2 a.m., got the whole thing in, got everything connected up, was able to test fire it, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, so I'm just going to go over a couple of things that I encountered that I had to deal with during the installation, uh, a couple of things that other people have encountered that I was able to work around, and then one, a couple things that other people haven't mentioned that I had to deal with that kind of suck. Before I go on though, if you just want to hear this thing start up and run with the stock Vader exhaust without knowing how I fit it or anything, uh, just skip to the end. Hopefully I'll put a minute marker in the video here or break it into chapters so you can do that. Uh, or just feel free to watch it and learn a couple things if you're thinking about doing this swap yourself. Also make sure you like this video if you like it. Uh, leave comments down below with questions uh, or answers to other people's questions and uh, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see some more stuff like this. So anyway, let's get started. So first thing I encountered that it doesn't seem like other people have to deal with too much is I was not able to fit my carburetor backwards uh for it just hits the top of the motor so i'm not sure if the neck is if i have it on wrong i don't think i do because it looks like if you were going to drill this for a fuel injector you would put it right there so i i don't know let me know down below if there's something that i messed up um so that's one thing that i encountered that i don't think other people do and then on this same side uh, i'll go ahead and talk about the exhaust here so the stock exhaust this is no secret it doesn't fit properly it doesn't fit the same way um, it is the same size but uh, what I was able to do was rotate it clockwise which shifts where it would connect to the muffler and I'll show you that in a second and then the uh, it clears the starter now by like like three millimeters like, I'm not even sure if it'll show up on camera but uh, it does not contact it uh, I just worry about it for heat purposes because that is this is a little catalytic converter so it gets plenty hot um, so yeah, I was able to fit it. It works for now. I think I'm going to have a shop fab up an exhaust unless you guys want to let me know down below if there's a good exhaust, at least header pipe that I can buy that will fit. Uh, and then we'll skip over the middle thing here and we'll go to the muffler. So as you can see, the exhaust doesn't come up in the normal place. I just have it held on there with a zip tie right now. Uh, and I'm not riding the bike currently, so that's okay to have it set that way for now until I make a bracket. Um, I'll tell you why I'm not riding the bike in a minute. It's, it's a stupid thing. It's not related to the motor at all. It's my own stupidity. Um, so anyway, I made a couple brackets out of just uh, hanger material here and dropped the exhaust and shifted it inward a little bit here for the muffler. And it fits just fine down in there now. Um, one thing I've heard people mention is that the kickstart shaft will not clear the foot brake spring bracket. That is true, but only on installation. Uh, if you don't plan to use kickstart, which if you did plan to use kickstart, you need a new rear set. But if you don't plan to use the kickstart, uh, you do have to bend this bracket out of the way, but you can then bend it back in to where it's supposed to be after install and reinstall your spring and then you're good and it totally works. Um, my kit came with an oil cooler, which there's a link in the description to this uh, Zhongshan engine listing on Amazon. If it's still there, feel free to buy it. That'll help out the channel immensely. It is an affiliate link, so I'll get a little kickback for that, um, which is always appreciated. Uh, then, um, oh yeah, the clutch. So I was able to reuse the stock Vader clutch cable, although mine was kind of torn up. I noticed when I removed it from the stock Vader, it looked like this. Uh, so I worry about like corrosion and stuff long term. So I'm still probably gonna get a new clutch cable, hopefully one that fits a little better too. But uh, what you can do is you just take out this little, what, the problem is this clutch cable is not long enough to actuate the clutch. So what you can do is just take out this little bolt here, remove the arm, shift it over a couple of teeth, put it back on, and then you have no problems and it will totally clear and be fine. Uh, I also took off the, the cover on the other side before I put any oil in it and made sure to 
oh well there wouldn't be any oil on the other side anyway but i made sure to lube the starter chain uh, and then i had to do a little bit of work on the clutch yesterday uh it seems really stiff and it's still really stiff but i was able to loosen it up just a little bit by kind of adjusting some things so more on that i guess maybe in a later video if it continues to be a problem i'm just kind of hoping it loosens up over time coming around to the other side i had to trim the chain cover just like everyone else um but no big deal i just used a reciprocating saw cut off kept cutting off more slivers until i got it short enough to clear the uh swing arm bolt housing there and then it went back in and it's it's just fine no chain slap out of this i was never able to eliminate the chain slap in the 125 cc motor even with the stock sprocket it was there and when i put a 17 tooth it was really bad on this one it comes with a 15 tooth and i put a 17 tooth on here and and it's fine uh, another thing that i did that i haven't seen a lot of people do so a lot of people are out there talking about oh you just you can solder in the neutral indicator wire from this well i didn't really like that so much so what i did is i took the uh the whole assembly from the 125 motor the the gear shift indicator and I swapped that over to the ZS190. And so now I get one down, zero neutral with neutral indicator light illuminated, two, three, four, and then in fifth gear, it just shows nothing. It doesn't show zero, it doesn't show four. So it's it, even though it doesn't say five, it's still a good enough indicator because it's distinct from anything else uh, on the bike. So that's fantastic. So you can keep your gear shift indicator, which I don't use it. I learned to ride without it, but I just like clean wiring and this enabled me to reuse the harness. Then for the main engine harness, uh, you have the green wire mod. Uh, there's a video out there about that. Uh, hopefully that guy never takes that down because it's super useful for people who don't know what they're doing. Um, I pulled the connector out of the harness, cut it or cut the black wire off of it, uncrimped the connector, which was painstaking. I should have just bought a new connector. But uh, I did that, and then I shaved the green wire to expose the copper, put that in, recrimped it, soldered it, and heat shrink tubed it so it is snug, and then reinserted it into the connector so this plugged in just like the stock Vader harness. Uh, I didn't have to do any of the rewiring or anything, although I may do that eventually just because I think the CDI is a little bit bigger and more gives it a little more juice. Um, but I have spare parts now, so that's fantastic too. Um... One thing I encountered that I haven't heard other people mention much is the vent tube. Of course, we all know it, it spits oil pretty bad. Uh, so I have that routed out the side here, outside the chain guard into this vinyl tube, and then just straight down to the ground. Uh, and hopefully that'll stay off of the tire that way because I've got it low enough, we'll see. Um, but the hose that comes on this motor that came with this kit was absolutely terrible and i mean it's not really worth contacting the seller over what's probably a you know 40 cent part but still it was just it was trash uh anytime i tried to bend it it would crack i mean it was like an ancient hose that had been heated a thousand times or something and and it was just brittle and just just completely disintegrated uh so it was unusable so uh i grabbed the exhaust hose which i believe is pretty durable off of the 125 cc the the egr hose and it's about the same size so have it on there with a little clamp that came with the original hose and then you know back into the vinyl tubing as i described um i think that's pretty much it for all the things i had to do it pretty much it bolts straight in uh no modifications required there other than it's wise to use larger bolts and drill out your engine mounts a bit but you may sacrifice a little bit of structural integrity on your engine mounts overall if you do that. So just be careful, make sure you get your bolts tight and replace the cheap Chinese garbage ones with some higher quality uh, engine mount bolts and you should be okay. Also, people talk about adding a third engine mount down below. I think that's a great idea. I'm currently looking for a way to accomplish that. Uh, last thing, I may have already mentioned this, uh my kit yeah it comes with an oil cooler but i haven't found a way to mount it yet um i'm still in the break-in so i have not been pushing this much 
Uh, in fact, since yesterday afternoon, I haven't been riding it at all. But, uh, so I haven't had any temperatures get up really high. Seems pretty normal. Uh, the exhaust header and catalytic converter, you know, they get to a few hundred degrees. The engine casing stays at about, you know, 200, 250 around there for normal riding. I think the main issue is if you get stopped after you've been riding hard. So if you keep the bike moving, you'll be fine. If you have to stop frequently, you might not be fine. So I'll probably try and find a way to install that cooler that came with it since it's, you know, direct bolt in, but I probably won't be able to do that till I get this car flipped around. So somebody let me know how to do that and I'll gladly, gladly do it. Um, so the reason I'm not riding right now, since yesterday at least, uh, or at least during the break-in, also like, even though I'm babying this because it's the break-in period, here, I'll zoom out so you guys can actually see a little bit more of the bike. Oh no, I can't zoom out, I'll step back. So even though I'm during, I'm still during the break-in period, this thing will do 55, no problem. Uh, in fourth gear at like 5,000 RPM, or fifth gear at like 3000 RPM with the 17 tooth sprocket. It's doing 55. I have my speedometer corrected using Speedo DRD, which I'll put a link to that in the description too. That's not an affiliate link, but those guys are awesome. Uh, they'll help you figure out which one you need, like they did for me. And then you just program it and you never have to worry about it again. It's fantastic. Um, anyway, I was trying to adjust the chain after installing the motor and I must have stripped my axle bolt. Um, sad day, so it's really loose right now. Uh, I've ordered a few stock, or a few OEM Grom ones because they're supposed to fit from Steady Garage. Uh, that place is pretty good too, at least on price. Their shipping's a little high, so I would try to order several things at once from them. That way you can you know, make the most out of that shipping charge because it's going to be at least 20 bucks no matter what you order. Um, so I have that coming and I have a new Cush Drive set coming from them. But anyway, it stripped out and then I was actually on a ride and I noticed some slop in the rear end so I kind of limped it home. And when I got home, <laughs> I noticed uh, just how loose the rear end was. So I'm not riding it. You can see it's, it's flopping around there. It's scratched up the swing arm. That's not very good. But you know, hey, it's a $1,200 bike. Not gonna complain about a scratched up swing arm or anything like that. Uh, anyway, I'll quit babbling now and we'll fire this thing up and I'll show you the gear indicator. So, fires up just like always. Make sure I'm in neutral. It says I'm in neutral. Let me actually crank it once. Okay, good. I am in neutral. Uh, I'm gonna hold the brake just in case. So we'll fire it up deal really good throttle response like fantastic overstock um, I'm just filming on my iPhone so I'm not gonna leave it running for a hugely long time but I will show you this functioning gear indicator it's fantastic so make sure I'm back in neutral yeah um, so that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, once I get a new exhaust, I'll probably do like a sound sample with a better mic. And then once I've got it broken in, I'll do a top speed run, which I imagine is probably close to 80 miles per hour if you do a tuck. But, um, you know, like I said, it's going 55 with no problem, 55, 60 with no issue at all, not even straining the engine at all. So I'm very pleased with this swap for a thousand bucks plus the 1200 for the bike originally i'm in for 2200 this will beat any grom on the road any stock grom at least on the road uh it's a fantastic little bike it's a ton of fun uh, again make sure you like comment and subscribe if you want to see more content like this uh if you want to interact with me I'm not sure how many more motorcycle videos i'll make it's not really what my channel's about but you know we'll see what the interest level is and if enough people like it i'll keep making some videos on this thing uh, and maybe some, you know, like riding vlog type garbage videos that you see. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for watching.